I'm joined by Tom Persglove, Minister for Tackling Illegal Immigration. Good see you, Nigel. I'm very pleased you're here on the programme. Thank you. On, on what is an important day. Mm. We have kind of heard all this before, haven't we? I mean, big announcements from Priti Patel. There was one that sounded like a sort of James Bond film launch. We were told about drones and RAF planes and the Channel Task Commander, Dan Omani. Whatever happened to him? Well... Dan O'Mahony is still working tirelessly every day on this issue and you are somebody who has long raised this concern and I think it's absolutely right that we take a strong stance in response to this issue. The bottom line is people are out there today saying that this is cruel, that this is inhumane. What I think is cruel and what is un inhumane and what is unacceptable is allowing evil criminal gangs to take advantage of people, to take their money with no regard at all for human life and to allow people to drown in the channel. It is terrible and we simply cannot have the sort of incidents that we had Tom, back I, in I November. I don't disagree with the word of that and I'm sure people watching don't disagree with the word of that. The trouble is, the point I'm making is, we've heard these kind of things before over well, the course of the last... Well, actually, ever since 2019, we've been hearing the same thing over and over, coming from the Home Office, and to date, none of it's worked, has it? The point I would make is that we have consistently said that one single intervention will not resolve this issue. It's all about the wider package of measures, the new plan for immigration, the Nationality and Borders Bill, which is making its way through Parliament, as well as the measures that we've announced today. I mean, I really do think that this economic development partnership with Rwanda is a significant step that we are determined to take to really shift the dial in terms well, of making an impact on this. Well, let's go through step by step what you propose today and let's see whether it can work. Number one, the Royal Navy taking control. Those five new Royal Naval vessels, they've been in Ramsgate Harbour, covered in tarpaulins for the last few weeks. They've been unveiled today. But there's a problem, isn't there? The gunnels are too high for them to be able to actually take migrants from small inflatable dinghies on board. And today they were going around the channel. It was actually RNLI that was doing all the work and they were simply picking up empty dinghies. Have you got the naval boats wrong? So the situation is that, of course, there is a lot of expertise in the Royal Navy that we have been drawing upon, but the command and control structure that the Royal Navy is now responsible for, I think, helps to move this forward. You absolutely were right to touch on these unacceptable beach landings, and I would argue that as the deterrent of the Rwanda yep. model comes into force, it is more likely that migrants will want to land without being detected. To date, migrants have wanted to be detected because they've wanted to enter our asylum system, so I think that so the, the Royal chances Navy of that... Stop these beach landings and that will be a great comfort by the way to people in Kent who are very concerned mm, understandably. about what's going on and you see uh, people running across uh, through the countryside, helicopters chasing them for hours. The point I'm making is that it looks like on day one the Royal Naval vessels are not fit for purpose. So what it does, it supplements of course the existing border force vessels that we've been routinely deploying in the channel. Right. This is about building capacity, it's about building resources, so it's about building expertise. So we're have border force, RNLI and the Royal Navy. This is about building well, expertise and about building okay. capacity, well, and I think that that is really welcome. Well, they won't be picking up people because the, the boats really aren't suitable. Let's think about what's going to happen in North Yorkshire, this Linton on Ouse site. How big is it? How many people can it take? So what we're talking about, of course, is the completely unacceptable spend that we've got on hotels at the moment. The message that I consistently hear from my colleagues in Parliament and from their constituents is that they're fed up of the fact that we're spending £5 million a day yeah. accommodating oh, people in hotels. Yeah. And so one of the things we committed to through the new plan for immigration was to develop these accommodation centres where people would be located um, in those centres where we would have case working facilities built around it so that we can process cases more quickly. Individuals that require sanctuary should receive sanctuary. But, of course, we also want to remove people who've got no right to be here as quickly as possible. Okay. So this is about getting this under proper control, reducing those costs, and then, of course, also trying to casework more quickly so that we get decisions so sooner. So it's the women and children, is it, that go to Linton on Ouse? So it will predominantly be um, single men. males. And, of course, in relation to... Hang on, um, hang, hang on. The single males are going to Rwanda. Well... We, of course, what we need to do is we need to work through this. We're dealing with quite significant numbers of people. We need to get the Rwanda model established and we need it to work and we need it to be successful. So in the interim, this will be challenging. I think the Prime Minister was very honest about that today and I think he was right to be. So how many people um, do you think will come across the channel this year? 
I'm not going to speculate, um, and I don't want to do 50, anything. I, look, I think 000, last year was unacceptable more. in terms of the number of people that we saw at 28,000. We're running at three times that rate, Tom. And we do not want to be in that position, which is why, times that which is why, and I know you'll support me on this, I would call on parliamentarians to get their act together and to get this bill passed into law so that we get the measures that we need as soon as possible on the statute book to help us in dealing with this. We've got to get the spend under control. It's not acceptable. You and I campaigned together in the referendum in saying that uncontrolled immigration Take into our country our wasn't right and we're determined to, to put that right and that's what the steps today will help us to do. So the £120 million pounds for Rwanda, your argument is that could be small beer in the end compared to the hotel bills and everything else we're picking up at the moment. Most definitely and I think you know at £5 million pounds a day on hotel spend that is very very considerable and the point I'd make is that of course the Economic Development Partnership, £120 million pounds up front and then of course we will be supporting some of the costs associated with processing but the, the key point in all of this is that we need to get the system into a much more sustainable position. This is not sustainable at the moment, as you've alluded to. And so, so of course, in the long talk. term, we should be saving money Let's and getting clear. the system under Let's control. Be clear. A young, undocumented male is taken in to Dover Docks. Is the plan that he would go pretty much straight to Rwanda, or would his claim be looked at? Would there be some assessment here before he was put on the aeroplane? So obviously we have to be compliant with our international obligations. That is essential. And of course, as the Prime Minister alluded to today, there is a significant chance that we will be legally challenged, which is why it's crucial that we live up to those international obligations. And I would argue that legal challenge is baseless if those international obligations are lived up to, which we will do. Individuals will be screened right. upon their arrival. Um, obviously, the determining factor will be whether it is safe for those individuals to be uh, okay. relocated to Rwanda. And we would then want to get so, on and so, do that as quickly so as if possible. if they've been screened and they're safe to fly to Rwanda, and then they pass their refugee status test in Rwanda, do they come back to the UK? No. They stay in Rwanda. Do they? I must be really clear about that point. And if they fail, they stay as well, do they? Um, that is a matter for the Rwandan authorities. Effectively, the moment that people step off the plane in Rwanda, they are the responsibility of the Rwandan government. Tom, final thought. Is any of this actually going to work all the while the Human Rights Act is, is there in British law? We are absolutely determined, as the Prime Minister said today, to do everything within our power to deliver on all of the measures that we are introducing, including this new Economic Development Partnership. I think we can't afford to fail on this. The British people would feel repeal, really strongly would you about it. Would the Human Rights Act and if it proves that this plan cannot operate because of that European legislation in UK law? Well, I am very clear, Nigel, that what we are doing is entirely compliant with our international obligations, and so that shouldn't be required. The Deputy Prime Minister is looking at, of course, the human rights legislation. That's currently out to consultation, and we are determined to bring forward reform. But I would argue that the policies that we are talking about today are compliant, so I would argue that legal challenge will be baseless. We'll see. This one will run and run. Tom Purse Club, thank you very Good much indeed you. for joining me.